Today, I wanted to talk about contactors. Contactors and what is it that they do? What is their purpose? On a contactor, you're basically going to have two parts. You're going to have two parts to it. One is going to be your contacts, and then the other one is going to be your coil. Now, this coil, what it's going to do is going to generate a magnetic field. A lot of times, this is how you see the coil, the coil drawn. Sometimes you may just see a circle like this. Sometimes you may see that it's like this. Sometimes you may see that it is like this. It just depends on the manufacturer or the person, whoever's doing the uh, schematic for it, that's going to show you different coils. But the purpose of the coil is to generate a magnetic field. When it generates a magnetic field, it's going to apply that magnetic field to this and it's actually going to close it. It's going to close the contacts. So basically all that this is, is just a switch. Really that's all it is. It's just a switch that's going to open and it's going to close. Now, contactors are used for very high amperages. A lot of times we use small switches like this for just a little light or something that's not going to draw that much amperage. But contactors, yeah, they're going to be rated for a much higher amperage, 5, 10, 20, 30, 50 amps, 100 amps, 200 amp contactors. So when you replace it, make sure you get the correct rating. The other thing I wanted to talk about, very, very important, is, well, is that the contacts up here, the contacts, what they're going to be doing is going to be making and breaking. They constantly make and break. When they break, is like this switch closing. Power is going to go through. It's going to go to the load. It's going to get the motor running. The motor's going to work, and so on. Now, you have small motors, and you have great big motors. Contactor has to handle that amperage. So you need to make sure that you get the correct rating for the contacts. Now, the contacts, basically, they're supposed to more or less look like this. It's going to be it's going to be like that, and when they close, they're actually going to rock into place and rock out. That's what they're going to do. They don't just slam, but they, they're going to rock in and rock out to get a good connection on there. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> remember, the contacts are going to break the amperage that's going through. Let's say that we have 20 amps going through here. That's a lot of amperage. Have you... Maybe you or someone you know, they, or you watch someone arc weld, you see that they get that rod and they get it close to the metal. As soon as they get it close to the metal, then you get that bright light and you have that spark and then the rod melts. The rod melts because of the heat. Because of the heat. It's going to be very high amperage that's going through there. The rod starts to melt because of that and, you know, it's the amperage that's doing it. Just like here, we have very high amperage. So every time these contacts, they close and they break, you're doing the same thing. You're going to be, as they get close to close, then you have a spark and then they make. When they break, as they're breaking, you have a spark and then it breaks that spark. So that's what ha what's happening on these. When these make contact, they're make, supposed to make good contact. As the contacts get old, what happens is you get pitting on here. And what that pitting is going to do is going to not give you this good connection, but it's going to give you a bad connection like this. Because it has a bad connection, now it is restricting the flow. Now this is creating a resistance to flow so that it's going to affect your compressor or your motor operation. Now, years ago, I was told by one of the mechanics, I said, well, every time we change a compressor or we change the motor, we always change the contactor. And I thought to myself, why? That makes no sense. Because you're just wasting the, uh, the you're wasting money. I don't like wasting my money. I don't want to waste my company's money. So why do that? Now, that was a long time ago. I didn't know about this and nobody explained this to me at the time. So I want you to understand this because the older the contactor is or the higher the amperage, the more that this is going to arc. The more it arcs, the more 
pitting you're going to have. The more pitting you have, the more restriction to flow that you have. Now, by looking at it, you can tell that it's pitted. But how do you know that it's actually restricting the flow? One of the ways that they do that is by checking the voltage across it. Now, voltage, voltage is pressure. Voltage is the pressure that we're pushing the electrons through the circuit. So now what happens is you have, let's say, for example, you have your contactor here with, and let's say that this happens to be a three phase contactor. So we're gonna have L1, L2, we have L3 like this. This is gonna be T1, T2, and T3. Now, what we do is we take and we put it, once we turn the unit on and the compressor or the motor or whatever is running and these contacts are actually closed, then we check from top to bottom here. Now, if these are good, what we're gonna get is gonna be zero because a voltmeter, what it does, it tells you what the voltage difference is between one place and another. So when we check between here, we read zero, that means that we don't have any voltage drop. We're not losing any voltage there. We check here and we check here. I remember going to this one unit, the compressor was not running. When I checked across here, I had 20. I was losing 20 volts across the contactor here. So I replaced the entire contactor and the compressor start right up. So again, it is very important to think about this. Think about how long that contactor has been in there. If your compressor burned up, what kind of damage did that do to the contactor? Or maybe it was the contactor that burned up that motor. Again, like I said, I was told a long time ago that every, every time this mechanic replaced the compressor, he always changed the contactor. Back then, I thought that was wasteful. But now I see how important it is because that contactor could stop the flow of electricity to the compressor and your compressor is going to fail because of a 30 or $40 part. So it's very, very important. Again, to troubleshoot this, you can just check your voltage across here, here, and here while these are closed and your motor or your compressor is running. Also, when you replace it, make sure that you know what the coil is going to be because this coil could be 24 volts it could be 110 volts it could be 240 volts I have seen coils that are even 277 volts so make sure that the coil voltage is right your amperage rating is correct and it may be a single double or a triple pole contactor for single phase or it could be for a three-phase motor. You gotta check all of these things when you replace a contactor. And again, it's a good idea to replace a contactor when you're replacing a compressor or one of those large motors. Now, my name is Julio, I hope this helped. And please like the video, check me out on YouTube, go to Aircon Academy and like the videos and follow me on that page. Thank you.